My name is Ramon Alamillo. I work for Pepperdine University for uh, almost 30 years. So last year when I was on the club soccer team, Matt Hibbs was actually president of LEAP and he told me that they would play every day here and so I, I came one day and just fell in love playing soccer and meeting new people like the landscapers, people you don't really interact with on campus and it's a different way for students to actually come out and get to know other people at Pepperdine besides faculty. Hacemos como amigos, hermanos en el juego de soccer y más diversiones que tenemos aquí entre nosotros, los trabajadores y los estudiantes también. Hay, est hay estudiantes que van a jugar con nosotros soccer y, y disfrutamos y nos divertimos, gritamos y matamos el estrés. Yo eh, considero a los estudiantes como familia mía. Está, está muy largo. Son dos horas de ida y dos horas de venida. Una hora de aquí a Los Ángeles y una hora esperando los más. Mi nombre es Gabriel Vega, de Río. He trabajado aquí por 29 años, close to 29 años. I learned that like I just like talk to people, especially when they're wearing a name tag. So when I got to Pepperdine, um, a lot of the like nicest, most wonderful people that welcomed me, I think the most, were the people in the cafeteria, the landscaping guys, um, the people that cleaned the dorm. So they, like the community feel was not just amongst the students and the professors and the staff, but it was just everyone on campus. And so, um, came to my dorm a lot and Gabriel was always um, in the lobby, um, Usually I caught him on break when he was eating his lunch and watching um, like Spanish soap operas on TV. And so I would sit down and talk with him and um, I got to know him pretty well. And so one day I, I went to my Humanities 111 class and I, I took, it was like my first college midterm. And I like, F does not describe how badly I bombed that day. Like, so uh, I'm coming back to my dorm room like a pretty dejected 18 year old. I work in Itao, in that time live uh... F suite, that's it. I don't remember exactly, but it's F suite. And then uh, talking with uh, Chase Runnels, he's the roommate. Okay. And then tell me to, hey, can you tell Robbie? He says um, he wants to go home. Don't feel well in here. Can you talk to him? And he says, okay, give me a minute. And I take about uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, so I walked back and he noticed like I was kind of slumping over and wasn't as happy as I normally was. He was like, what's what's going on? I was like, oh, Gabriel, it's not that big a deal. Like I just failed my first college test. I don't think I can cut it here academically. Like I don't want to be extradited back to Texas. Like I'm just kind of worried. <laughs> and says, say, why you go home? Uh, imagine the sacrifices make uh, your parents to stay here. And I know that things too. Uh, I'll never forget, he, he, he's not a serious person and he stopped and like he put his hand on my shoulder and like sunk his fingers into like my shoulder and said, like words I'll never forget, he said, looked me right in the eye and he said, never ever give up. And it was like this really like profound moment um, and it was a really simple message and it was from someone I didn't expect it to come from. Uh, next day, the chase, I don't know, says, what you say, what you tell him. He very, very stay here for, and then he stay here for, till he graduated. I, I like to, to be, uh, tener el campo hermoso, bonito, seguro para los estudiantes. Me gusta que ellos van a, a, a tomar sol, a hacer su homework, o por allá donde estoy cortando el zacate. Les dejo el bonito y, y pasen su tiempo. Y cuando están uh, en competencias como el béisbol, como soccer, tenis, y pienso yo, oh, qué bonito se mira el campo para que los estudiantes tengan más ganas de, de, de triunfar. I was sitting in the calf just eating 
by myself one day and then I noticed that uh, Miss Maria was cleaning up after all the dishes that were just lying strewn about. So I said hello to her and I asked her how she's doing. And we just carried on a conversation because um, we both speak Spanish and I told her that I'm learning Spanish in school right now. And she was like, oh, isn't that nice? So she's kind of helping me practice my conversational Spanish skills. Que estudien, que no se cansen de estudiar, que traten de, de formar su carrera, terminarla, y que, que tengan sus su ratos pues, de, de relajarse, pero que se no se cansen, porque pues yo sé que se cansan. Eh, el, el, la, el cerebro pues se también se cansa, como que trabajes manual, también es igual, todo es un trabajo. Y yo los considero porque en mi hijo, el varoncito, el varón, llegaba de la universidad y bien cansado, se dormía. Y todo eso, pues yo sé que, que y a todos los, les decía, estudien. After I got to know Maria, um, I realized like what a difference that she made in like the way I thought about things. And, um, when I got to like talk to her about spring break and just get to know a little bit about her family and where she came from, I, I realized like how, you know, how obviously important she is to this community. You know, sometimes I talk to my friends and we're all like, oh, I had such a hard day, you know, I had three classes and I was this and this and that. And it just kind of puts things into perspective. It's like, yeah, we may have had six hours of class and we may have been up at 8 a.m. and had three different activities and the head of this organization and that organization. But, you know, Maria gets here at, she gets up at 4 a.m. to ride the bus to Pepperdine. And she gets here at six and works until eight o'clock at night and she never once complains. What a lot of people don't realize is that uh, people who work for us, you know, clean up for us, are actually just not just invisible hands and feet, but they're actually people with the story behind them. You okay? One more. Okay. The LEAP is the language exchange at Pepperdine and it's a program sponsored by the International Programs Office. Basically what we do is we have about 40 landscapers and housekeepers and 40 students and they work together every week. They meet once a week and have lunch and basically just talk in English and Spanish and it's designed so that there's kind of cultural exchange but also like the language exchange component of it. Um, we want people to, to get as much uh, learning out of it as they can in other languages. Of course the students learning Spanish and, the, and many of the employees learning English. This is my friend Neftali. He's from La Ceiba, Honduras, and he's worked at Pepperdine for 20 years. And we have been meeting every week, more or less, since January 2013. So all 15 or 16 months now. It's a nice person and my teacher. Um, I like it for long time is uh, too many questions and, and I see happy. Thank you very much for helping me for talk to um, English and traduction in Spanish. Thank you very much Will. Um, I appreciate Thanks. 
decided to join LEAP because I just came back from being in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I wanted to continue, you know, practicing my Spanish and also just getting to know someone else in their culture. And so I thought there's no better way than joining LEAP and getting to know a lot of the workers here because I see them always around, but I never speak to them, and that's my fault, and I always feel bad for doing that. But with participating in LEAP, I'll be able to get to know more of their story and why they're here at Pepperdine. Just, just the fact that they do so much and they don't ask for anything in return is that's why I think they value these conversations that they have with the students so much more because they don't get to speak with us a lot or we just say hi to them and keep on going. So it's helped me to realize to value my relationships more and you know the people that I you know, constantly walk by on this campus just to greet them and say hello, how are you doing, get to know a little more about them whenever I see them. Erika. Erika tiene 14. 14. Ella es mi esposa. Y este soy yo. Cuatro hijos. Pero desgraciadamente ahora estoy solo. She passed away. Y, y ya estoy solo, pero tengo mi familia y tengo mi familia en Pepperdine también. Y, y me siento feliz. Me siento alegre, feliz. I'm happy to come to work in Pepperdine. Because Pepperdine is my second, almost my first hogar, <laughs> my first home. <laughs> eh, tengo cinco hijos. Solo una se me vino de mojada. Ya tiene como 20 años de estar acá. Y los restos están allá cuatro. El uno, el, me viene más que nada por ayudarles en los estudios. El uno es un varón, el único varón es abogado. I have a four, two boys and two girls. The little one is 24 now, he's in the, uh, take a master's degree in uh, psychology. The, uh, the two boys um, don't take uh, college classes, only high school. And the, the old one the, uh, is take a master's degree in criminology in the uh, New York University. And then have uh, 10 grandchildren. I got great joy from um, talking to the people in the cafeteria and the FMP folks, just because you know, they they just they're just so positive and like it, they they did jobs that got overlooked and that maybe were underappreciated, um, and they just were some of the most wonderful people I met. Uh, my brother-in-law working here, and in that time, uh, tried to hire people for housekeeping before us as a company, but maybe don't fin finish the, the, time, the time for them and hire new people for paper and employees. And then this is the reason my brother-in-law told me to come to apply for. I'm working in uh, carpets, floors, cleaning, uh, Firestone Field has cleaning, working in the nights for five years and then back to the dormitory area. There wasn't a lot of people on campus that um, I like felt confident enough to talk to or confide in. Um, and so when my parents were going through that divorce, that was really a hard time for me, another time when I needed someone to lean on. And, you know, obviously Gabriel was there to do that. The most old people, all the students are good students. Listen to me. And sometimes I say I don't, I don't your father, but uh, your father is far away. Uh, but uh, if you let me tell you something good for you and for your life. Sadly, like there's a there's someone serving your food or like picking up after you. I think sometimes has like a dehumanizing effect, which is really sad. Um, and I think students may do it like consciously or subconsciously, but I think that's like the hurdle that, that has to be, you know, jumped over is that um, the distance between you as like a, 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 a high achieving like high school student who's going to a prestigious university and the person, you know, putting food onto your plate, the, the gap is, is, is there is none. They say, um, you know, 
for example, that, oh, like we, we, we can take care of these kinds of things so that you all can study and work hard and, and change the world or something like that. So I think they had this kind of undying commitment to, uh, to students and to Pepperdine and the, and the, university, the university's mission. I think that's, that's very, very special. 